Prince Charles's is the heir apparent meaning he will one day become King of Great Britain. This is a heavy burden for any child to carry, but apparently, Prince Charles's childhood taught him to be independent after the Queen abandoned him for six months as a child. Prince Charles is the longest serving heir apparent in British history, meaning he has held the position of next in line to the throne for the longest period of time throughout Britain's extensive monarchical history. The Prince of Wales was born in Buckingham Palace during the reign of his maternal grandfather George VI. His grandfather died in 1952 whereupon his mother Elizabeth II became Queen. In the next year, the Queen undertook an official Commonwealth tour visiting 13 countries over a period of six months, leaving her young son Charles and daughter Princess Anne, behind with her mother and nannies. The Prince of Wales has faced a lot of highs and lows throughout his life, but it seems that he learned independence from a very early age after his mother and father left him and his sister to embark upon a royal tour of the Commonwealth. Queen Elizabeth II was coronate in June 1953 and within five months she decided to follow in her father's footsteps and upon an ambitious tour. However, tragically, this is not something Prince Charles chose to continue. When he had his children, he and Princess Diana chose to travel with their sons Prince William and Prince Harry, which meant that Prince William undertook a tour of Australia and New Zealand at just nine months old. The tour was made up of 12 countries and meant traveling more than 40,000 miles by land, air, and sea. It was the most ambitious tour that had ever been undertaken by a royal and like a tour her parents took as the Duke and Duchess of York when she was just nine months old, saw her away from her children for nine months. During her Christmas broadcast that year which was recorded in Auckland in New Zealand, she said I set out on this journey in order to see as much as possible of the people and countries of the Commonwealth and Empire. I want to show that the crown is not merely an abstract symbol of our unity but a personal and living bond between you and me. Since that time the Queen has visited every one of the 53 Commonwealth countries with the exception of Rwanda and Cameroon, both of which joined in more recent years. In order to show her commitment to her duties as the Queen and meet the people of the Commonwealth, she undertook the tour just five months after her coronation ceremony. The Queen and Prince Philip's tour from November 1953 to May 1954 included Bermuda, November 24 to 25 Jamaica, November 25 to 27 Fiji, December 17 to 19 New Zealand, December 23, 1953 to January 30th 1954. Australia, February 3rd to April 1st. Strait Settlements Cocos Islands, April 5th. Ceylon, April 10th to 21. Aden, April 27th. Uganda, April 28th to 30. Malta, May 3rd to 7. Gibraltar, May 10th. During this sixth month absence, Charles was cared for by the Queen Mother Elizabeth Bose Leon and his nanny Mabel Anderson. Throughout his childhood, Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip saw Charles on a daily before bed, but he mostly spent time in the company of his beloved nanny Miss Anderson, or Miss V. Royal author Robert Jobson, who wrote Charles at 70, Thoughts, Hopes and Dreams described Miss Anderson as Charlie's rock. Mr. Jobson said Charles cared for her deeply. Mr. Jobson told, Mabel Anderson was certainly Prince Charles's rock when he was a young and sensitive child. Of course in a different way, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, the Queen, and of course his wife the Duchess of Cornwall are paramount female figures in his life. But Mabel was a key person in his formative years. She was always there for him and he cared for her deeply. Mr. Jobson added, Mabel is loved by Charles and was often on a select guest list to Windsor Castle. Mabel, who started as an assistant nanny, to help the then Princess Elizabeth who was pregnant with Charles. Despite her lack of formal training was chosen by the future Queen because Her Majesty liked her quiet, unassuming manner. According to Mr. Jobson it was indeed his nanny Mabel who undertook most of the caring for Charles in his early years. He said, it was Mabel who put Charles to bed, told him stories, 
patched up his cuts and bruises and hit upon the idea of teaching the royal corgis to hide and seek with princess and so that she wouldn't miss Charles when he started school.